parts of Omaha were hit with baseball-sized hail, leaving behind a trail of damaged property. Hail ranging from golf ball size to baseball size damaged windows in far homes and cars. The full extent of the damage done by that late night storm will be assessed today. brought in by the client because of uh, one the complexity of the claim but also the historical nature you know what's important about this property is that as you see with all the, the history and everything that's going on here that you know that the architectural detail is brought back to these buildings some of these buildings are as old as I want to say 19 uh, 1928 some of the original buildings they first started building here at the property in the 1880s and they've demolished some of the buildings but have built new ones um, and so, as they kind of started to understand the complexity and size of this loss, it was quickly realized that it wasn't just, you know, hey, let's approach this as a singular thing, but let's get a team of experts in here because as you can see, there's a ton of history. And so what a lot of our purpose is, is to return all of this, you know, really great, rich history from an architectural standpoint back to it, that they get what they had before the loss occurred. Um, so it's kind of, it's kind of humbling to see that you know we've got a hundred and you know well over a hundred years worth of architecture and, and people's lives that were lived here. So it's a it's a it's a big burden and task for us to bring on to um, you know bring this place back to what it was beforehand. So it's a huge honor and it's also really neat to see what's been here before and you know what uh, what this place has meant to all these people. So basically, in these types of situations. We we find a little bit more um, moisture as we're as we're moisture mapping because it's fresh. But since we're six weeks into the project, uh, things have kind of dried out automatically. You know, dissipated on us. So what we have to do in a situation like this is follow the follow the water and uh, come up with the best game plan and best solution as far as how to out of moisture map and track down the water that's leaking from the roof and then give this information to the roofer so he can search for penetrations in the area, possible flashing or whatever he may find in above these rooms. Yeah, the readings I'm getting are pretty average for, for what it is. Okay. Um, if it was wet, it would be over a certain point, obviously, but right now it's been so long, like you said, it's, right. Right. it's kind of at the point where it just needs to So right removed. now all we do is, like I said, yeah. it has to be removed, yeah. Mm -hmm. Follow the, follow the water stains, uh, and we know we have some issues above us based on ceiling tile, based on carpet staining. They've had leaks through here. Obviously, nobody's done any drying, any mitigation to this point. So that's kind of on how we're moving forward with our assessment. Uh, even though we're moisture mapping, we're not getting signs of moisture at this point. That's why it's really important for us to get in right after the fact. Uh, so if we're, you know, building owner knows that they've had an issue, we like to get on it right away so we can properly moisture map and prove our case that this is why we're demoing these areas. So then we, uh, we'll we just continue through, I'll measure and sketch everything, and we'll, uh, we'll walk it out. Yeah, one of the main things is to avoid, obviously you got Cathry coming off a roof that's got bird shit on it, right. you know, and it's coming through the walls, permeating, coming down on the carpet, so you got mold growth, you got potential for asbestos and lead contamination. So obviously doing the moisture map, having then those suspect areas tested by the CIH, yep. coming back with the protocol, you guys then have the protocol to put a remediation estimate to it, at which point that gets submitted then, the care has it, right. everybody goes forward right. on it. You, once it's done, the industrial hygienist comes back in, does a clearance on it, and now the owner has a piece of paper that actually shows that it's been remediated properly and it's been cleared by the CH who came in and did a baseline on Correct. it. Correct. Yeah. And there you go. And even at that, uh, you know, when the, when the hygienist is in here, you know, he, he'll do an air sample as well. So then we have air clearance at the end. So when we flip the project, we feel comfortable. We've encapsulated or cleaned up everything because the hygienist is going to come back here with the air samples too. Um, That's critical. Getting that, that very closing very document saying, yes, it's been done. Right. And it's been restored. Right. Properly. And versus even, having just dried it. And then nobody comes back out to actually test it to make sure that 
yes, now it's cleared. There's no m microbial, there's no contaminants. It clears it. It clears yeah. it. Clears it. Yeah. Right now, it, it's not clear for sure. Yeah. No. It's contaminated, yeah. so, yeah. you know. And even if it's clean water after 72 hours, which is considered, considered, it's considered category three. So once, once you reach a certain threshold, whether it's a fresh water or, or dirty water from a roof or sewage, it, it, after 72 hours, we're, everything's cat three. That's a good point. Potentially, right now, if it happened, it could be potentially cat three. So, I mean, yeah. it's still, yeah. like yeah. I said, with any anything that it, the water goes through, it could contaminate the water itself. And, yeah. Yeah. yeah, leaking through, especially you're pulling through fibers, you're <clears throat> coming through, who knows what's above us. So we have an example of water damage building materials that have degraded into category three water damage, which means water that is immediately dangerous to your health. Also, we have asbestos containing material that has been damaged because of the water. It wasn't a problem before, but it's a problem now because it's become friable. We're gonna take a core sample down to the substrate and we send this off to a lab. They'll test it for asbestos containing materials and uh, we'll make a decision based on what we get back from the lab. RJH and Associates. Uh, I'm out of Houston, Texas. Uh, my role here today is basically to observe the roof and the cladding systems of the buildings to look for evidence of damage caused by hail or storm. And uh, I will, I'll be reporting back through Robert Hinojosa, who is the uh, president of our company, and he'll be providing the feedback to the client. Well, there's evidence of some wind damage here, uh, there, there, and if that penetration over there. But the shingles have been folded back. They didn't. Yeah. They, they they weren't adhered. The uh, seal tab didn't seal the two shingles together. Uh, when the wind picked it, it just lifted up the loose shingles, folded it back, flipped it around until it basically exceeded the work function of the, of the material, and it flew off. How about hail here? How how it looks? There's there's a evidence of a lot of spots. Where the tail hits, but until you take the shingle, so take take the shingle off like this. Is the damage there? You got to take the shingle off and look at the underside of it to know whether Keep the, the damage. damage came all the way through. Yeah. I would leave that to the insurance company's adjuster. They're going to make this determination. So, you see this pock mark, second course down right there? It's what would you call that? This one there, right? Yep. What's that? An issue with the, the coating. Uh huh. You glaze coating on the tile, it looks like you must draw for it. Something like this looks more like an impact point. Sure, sure, sure. Okay, all right. It would have been good if we could have had the, the Ludoisi guy here today. It's always nice to have the, always nice to have the number one Ludo installer on your team in the country. Today we're doing a core here because one, we want to make sure that the building, whenever we do go back with it, it's code compliant. Because the IECC states you've got to have, I believe here in Omaha, an R25. So you've got to have that code. But then also, whenever you get a pro whenever you get older construction methods, you've got asbestos, you've got lead, and you've got to make sure that you're not putting a pollutant, especially in a school. So I mean, you can't go back with a product. That's how you hear these kids get sick because they've been exposed to lead or asbestos. Right. Um, and so we want to make sure that we're getting, you know, the hygienist to clear everything. That way, when the contractor is going back, he doesn't have to worry about, am I going to make this, these people sick?
so Paramount was uh, just one of those companies where worked with Wade from the beginning, absolutely felt trust with him. Just his knowledge base compared to even the other people we had talked to was just definitely a level above. And uh, knowing that he, the team that they brought around them would be a team that uh, we could really trust. We pulled the trigger and uh, so far it's been great. They've been working with the contractor that we chose and it sounds like it's been a great relationship there. And so really uh, helping even them navigate the process because uh, we also, we have just a very, there's a lot more buildings throughout uh, that we also own, uh, not just on this campus, but uh, different places. So it's been a, been a great process so far. Yeah, this job's awesome. You've got a. You, this is one of those really cool ones because you've got literally a little bit of everything. You've got a handmade French tile. You've got a flat tile. You've got your standard Spanish tile. You got ballasted. You've got uh, 60 mil fully adhered. You've got 60 mil loose laid mechanical fastened. You've got interior damage. You've got. Um, you've got uh, contaminants and pollutants. You've got to deal with. So that's why we brought out so many experts because. You only know what you know, and if you're not an expert at that particular thing, you gotta bring in the expert, and that's what the client deserves, is that expert at every aspect of it, and that's what we're trying to bring to them. So sealant plaster in here, so that tells me right here we can send them in, test the tube, get the tube of four drop, tube of two drop, whatever the case is, uh, and the rest of it we're going to assume that it's all positive uh, according to this. Yeah. yeah, of course, unless we want confirmatory. But other than that, that's the whole brunt of it for this whole property right here. And freeze, crack, freeze, crack. And so it might not always just be chipped, but if it knocks the glazing off, it's damaged. Beautiful. That, that, that's how you look at roofs. And you get a little bit of smudge on your <laughs> on your forehead. <laughs> now you know you worked your yeah, ass right. off. Right? Yeah, you like, look, look, if there is if there's some roofing material, it doesn't mean you got close enough to the roof. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, Great. Sweating your, or you wiping your <laughs> spot off of your hand. Like that. Yeah, he got he got it from the hand. That's how it was me. <laughs> Shaking <laughs> Joe's hands. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not gonna patch it. That's a roofer's man. job. I'll pass. I'll pass. What, I look like a roofer? I got, I got a roofing license. I, I know. I, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, no, we, as we cut it, we pass it. Well, here. Then I'll leave, here's the patch. I'll leave, okay. I'll leave it there for you. You know, we do the 800. And I know this sounds stupid when I say 800 square job, like it's not a big deal. But the 800 square shingles rough is like, all right, yeah, we've got wind and hail, and we're going to write that. But when you get into this stuff, and you really, it's better when you have to think. You, I, we don't have to bring your A game, right? Yeah, we don't have to think on a shingle drop. Right. It's like, oh easy. yeah, whatever. All right, I've done a million of these. <laughs> um, you've never, I don't know anybody that's done a million of these. Um, it's cool, one of the adjusters on our team, he's been a fire guy for 20 years. So he's taken a look at uh, insurance losses from the fire side of it and never ever thought that hail and wind claims would be legit. And now here seeing a huge hail and wind, you know, this could be a $10 million hail and wind loss. And here he is like, wow, so much more to it than just, oh, there's a dent. It's really cool.